Okay, I've spent most of my time this morning talking about ArcGIS, but ESRI has launched into a new direction. We are also building geospatial solution products, three of them. One released for the first time last year, two new ones that are just coming out the end of this year and next year. The first one is Hub for community engagement. The second one is indoors, taking GIS into an indoors information system. And the third is for designed for urban planning and urban redevelopment. The first one, Hub, is now operating in about 20 cities around the world. Started in Los Angeles, but expanding very rapidly. I expect a thousand cities will have Hub by the end of next year. What is Hub? Hub is a technology that allows not only open data, but also open services built around policies that a government might create. It involves a community portal so that citizens can actually get engaged with a city and work it. The second basic technology is called indoors. This is GIS for buildings, and it's going to revolutionize how we manage large multi-story buildings all over the world helps us do space planning, asset management, wayfinding through buildings upstairs, downstairs, responds to emergency managements in buildings, emergency response in buildings, and so on. It's a complete indoor GIS. And the third one, one that my colleague Brooks is going to show a little bit of, is a brand new very bold system for urban planning. And it will allow urban planning agencies to totally transform, leveraging GIS data, but totally transform how they do project planning, how they evaluate new plans, and how they organize all of their urban indicators which can give guidance to planning. So, Brooks, you want to show them a little bit of a preview? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Jack. And I have to say, it's wonderful being in Singapore. It's been a couple of years. Um, but this application is being developed really with community engagement in mind, and that's uh, really at the forefront of planning efforts here at the city. So it's very exciting being here this week. So what we've noticed is that our cities are facing serious challenges, like increasing population growth, and this is forcing massive development. In response, Esri has partnered with the Boston Planning and Development Agency and others to develop a solution called ArcGIS Urban, which is orchestrating urban development and planning workflows, providing a common platform for planners, developers, architects, and citizens. So the BPDA, the Boston Planning Development Agency, they're responsible for planning and economic development for the city of Boston. And they do this by tracking key indicators, such as population growth, Population growth is occurring mainly between the historic downtown and Dorchester at an average of 80 large development projects a year. So growth at this scale requires thoughtful planning. The Dorchester Avenue Planning Initiative, or DOTAV, as they like to call it in Boston, has been launched to proactively reimagine a, a 21st century industrial use corridor that connects these two vital, important areas of Boston. So let's dive into DotEv, and we can use ArcGIS Urban to plan this very special neighborhood of Boston in 3D in a web browser. Zoning determines what you can and cannot build on a piece of property, building use, dimensional requirements, and densities. Typically, we find that zoning codes are legal text, paragraphs, uh, and can be very cumbersome to interpret. But with ArcGIS Urban, we can load that zoning code into the application and apply it in scenario planning. The baseline scenario for any plan determines how much land is financially feasible for development today. This suitability score compares land use, vacancy, and year built, and identifies these properties. We can see a likely development pattern if no changes were made to the current zoning code. And using ArcGIS Urban, we can propose new zoning changes and create build-out scenarios for .av. 
engaging in a discussion with both citizens and developers on how much is enough or how much more is needed. So here in this proposed scenario, the development potential changes dramatically with new building heights and new building uses. These are plausible building forms based on the underlying zoning constraints. The dashboard shows a high intensity of residential throughout this plan. So to balance the space use in the plan, let's add a little bit more office. We can edit the zoning on this parcel here to change it from its residential tower to a commercial office tower. Here in the parcel editor, we can configure overrides to the zoning district. These settings help visualize the 3D form of the building that could legally be built. Let's go ahead and lower the maximum building height to 200 feet. We can also specify multi-level setbacks to make sure and preserve our view down Dot Avenue towards our downtown. And finally, we can create a building type by assigning space use, transforming this residential tower into a commercial office tower. There we go. Let's check our results. So we can immediately see how these changes to the underlying zoning code might impact our view through Dot Avenue towards our downtown. In addition to measuring the amount of new building construction, as seen here, we can also estimate growth capacity for key indicators such as total population, the number of households, or jobs. These key indicators are used throughout the urban planning efforts at the city of Boston and go into how to develop these scenarios more effectively. Arcturus Urban serves as this central overview of all the plans and projects occurring in the city, like the Washington Village project shown here in green. And it relieves development pressures, which are largely due to a disconnect between a developer's proposed project and what's allowed by the zoning code. The BPDA's development review and urban design teams are really excited about Arcturus Urban because it can actually facilitate small and large-scale projects from initial review to board approved to permitted. One such project is 115 Winthrop Square, directly in the heart of downtown Boston. Visualizing a new building in its surrounding context can actually minimize a lot of the bottlenecks that occur, offering better collaboration between the city and the real estate developer. And project details can also be provided to the public to better engage with citizens and provide a better understanding. Using Arcturus Urban, we can also run each project through a series of evaluations, impact evaluations, like you see here. In this case, the Winthrop Square Tower had to lower its building height because of the amount of shadow that was cast on the Boston Commons here in red. The BPDA has a standard process now to evaluate plans and projects moving forward, to see the impacts on all of the projects and plans on key indicators, such as the number of new households that each project is contributing to the city as it starts to grow. Arcturus Urban can deliver a growing amount of new urban data and analytics into the hands of the city planners, but also the citizens. This collaborative platform ensures a more economically prosperous, resilient, and vibrant city for generations. Arcturus Urban represents a new solution product. It's being developed to improve planning and community engagement for your community. By connecting government, the private sector, and citizens, a new generation of focused solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Brooks. I, I, I want to have you pause for a minute and think. This isn't just some three-dimensional virtual city. This is a three-dimensional urban planning system. It isn't a three-dimensional GIS with nice visualization. It's a transactional oriented system which allows all the players in a city to connect and see what's, what's going on. So it's easy. When I first started to see it and my colleagues started to imagine it, I thought, oh, okay, we could just do this in GIS. What, 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 why, 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 Brooks? What's all the excitement? No, it's not. It's an integrated into workflows system 
that transactionally maintains the ci city. It's also integrating all the analytics. For example, if I put this building here, what's the additional traffic? What's the additional noise? What's the additional view shed as you showed? What's the additional impact? So it's design guided by indicators in the city and then evaluated in a transparent environment so everybody gets it. So these mistakes or discontinuities or upsets in communication don't happen. And so while we've dreamt of such a system with GIS underpinning for years, it's never been really a system. So I wanted you to just, I mean, you're some of the first audiences to ever see this thing. It's going to, I think, enter a whole new era of integrated thinking for cities. Thanks, Brooks. Yeah, thanks. Well, yes, thanks again. Yeah. Brooks's team has, I think, 60 or 70 developers. They're in different places around the world. They've been working fer ferviously for several years, building this on all the principles of planning. And one of the reasons why he's here is to get enlightened at the kind of context that Singapore needs in making such a system operate. Uh, I. I wanted to say what's next in our system. Uh, this year we released 10.6.1 and Pro 2.2. Early next year, first quarter, there'll be another generation of tools which keep pushing the envelope. And next year there'll be more news. I want to encourage you to stay current and keep pushing the envelope because I think not doing that causes us to all fall behind. Look. Here was a quote often credited to Charles Darwin. He said, it's not the strongest of the species or even the most intelligent that survive, but it's the ones that are most responsive to change. And this, I think, speaks strongly to GIS professionals. We need to stay current and pushing the envelope of what's possible. We're in an exponential exponentially changing world now. I won't be here as we see the future realized, but many of you will be here. The kind of footprints that we're laying down in urbanization and land management, policies that are being made are, are beginning to threaten our world. No kidding. And we, that's collectively we, here I'm speaking to the GIS community particularly, can help the world understand what's going on. This is a big deal for me. And also how to interpret that understanding into action through all the examples of work we showed here. GIS and your profession turn out to be, I think, the best platform to rapidly scale out an aggressive change of the patterns that are occurring. And I think our collective success in applying GIS will, will create and inspire a better future. What's next? A better future for our planet. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you in conclusion to this morning for being here. Uh, thank you for all of the good work that you do. And thank you for the col collaboration on many scales. Thank you. <laughs>